Welcome to Mark Menendez Bass TV. It is a perfect day to catch a big one. Overcast, front moving in, cold. And I've got one of my favorite secret lures out here, Series 4 crankbait. And we're gonna try to put them in the boat with a crankbait. And we might have to throw a little jerk bait here, mix that in. We're gonna see what we can do in early winter time. I love to throw a plug. I even like to throw a plug a lot in the winter time. Right now, water temperature is 47 degrees, and a bass will chase at 47 degrees. Now, it's not, he's not speeding along with, with a lot of speed, but he will come on up there and chase something down. I'm using a five to one gear ratio. You can see I'm not really cranking real fast. But one of the tricks I do is don't fill your reel spool all the way up the line. See right there? See that distance right there? That's a little bit less line on that spool. And that gear ratio is probably 4.9 to one instead of the 5.1 to one at, a, at the full deal. So that slows me down even more so I don't over crank it. I have a tendency, this is, this is my normal one of crank speed when, uh, when cranking a crankbait. And that's okay to get that bait down and start it, but when I get it down and bump it off that rock, then I just slow it down same principles apply to cold water cranking as it do in regular cranking. Make sure that bait gets on the bottom and deflects. That deflection is the key. You know, series four is a bigger profile bait and it has a wide wobble, which kind of goes against cold water cranking. Most of the time in clean, clean water like we have here on this lake, you want a real tight wiggle. But what I found is with that bigger bait, that bigger Series 4 and that big wide wobble, it catches bigger fish. Now one thing about cold water, it does not affect a larger bass like it does a small fish. Your little 10, 12, 13 inch fish, they, you don't catch a lot of those when the water dips below 40, 45, 48, 45 degrees or less. You tend to catch better quality fish. So. Why not feed them a steak instead of a little Snickers candy bar? And this Series 4 makes it work real well. That's jerk bait central right there, dude. When you see them on the depth finder suspended out here like that, the bait suspended in that depth, that is, that is a real key to pick a jerk bait up. And the further I get out here, the more fish I'm seeing in that six to 10 foot zone. And generally what happens in the early winter like this is first thing in the morning, you'll get an early bite up on the bank. They'll get them a bite to eat and they'll come out here and hang out with their buddies. As the day goes on, the fish continue to move out a little further off the bank. So sometimes I'll be making those casts where my boat is normally sitting as I'm going down the bank or even a cast away from there. So don't be scared to get way out here and have your bait not land on the bank. If you're seeing them suspended out there like that, get that boat out there a cast and a half and you can always work in or work out a little further. Uh, when I saw that situation years ago in a Bassmaster event down on Pickwick and Wilson, I was the guy that adjusted and won the event because I stayed off the bank further than everybody else did. It kept me around fresh fish all day long. But that is telling me I might ought to put this plug down and put that jerk bait to use. That's awful pretty right there. Awful pretty. See all the bait right there? That's the, that's the right stuff right there. When I see that bait up here in the water column, that's when a jerk bait is super, super effective. Because that bass right there will come up and look at that bait. And I have just got to reach down there. Sometimes you gotta make adjustments on the fly. Sometimes it's adjustments on the fly that count. I'm gonna start with a white jerk bait. See that flash, that good flash on that bait? I'm gonna start with this old summer sexy. Get out here. Now this is the this is the deep, the deeper lip jerk bait. This is a 300 deep. It gets down into that nine, 10 foot water range, and it's gonna be right in these fish's face back up a little bit and really focus on this part of the away from the rock because this is where I'm seeing most of them out off the dam suspended out here high in the water column. I'm 
and get this boat out here in 18 to 20. Get this bait over 12 to 13 and see what happens. There's, oh, that's a good one. Oh, what a good bite that was. It said doink. Oh, this is a big old headed gigant, this one. Oh, stay peg, stay peg, stay peg. Oh my goodness, oh, look at this. Oh, he's got it just sideways in his mouth. Look at that, there you go. There's your big old wintertime fish. Oh, goodness gracious, stay down, big boy. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He's so cold, he can't jump, that's what. Golly. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, I got you. Looky there, looky there. See how he bit that bait? Right by the head. Right by the head. Let me get up here. That's a good one right there. Oh, what a beautiful bass that is. He hit it dead on the paws. Now look, he's got it by the front hook. And there's a good lesson right there on our baits. He was hooked up really well. Golly, he's so cold, it's just like being in the refrigerator. All right. Now, look at that one. Look how thick that bad boy is. What a beautiful bass. See that little black spot on that bait? That little black spot is a false eye. And when I move this bait around, you see the bait, but you're focusing on that little black spot. Another little tip we'll give you in just a second. Let's get that one back in the, back in the lake. Oh, what a good fish. He said, twitch, twitch. Oh, what a good bass that is. That was a good bite. Get out of here, Sadie. Ah, love me some jerk bait. That fish ate it, it had it by the head of the bait. That means he was looking right at that little false eye. False eye is what you find on the back of the threadfin shad. That's his defense mechanism because the bass focuses in on that. Shad, it's a little further back. So what I do on a lot of baits is I'll paint a false eye on it, particularly a crankbait, and put it right over the front hook. That allows that fish to hit at that false eye and get a better hookup ratio because he's aiming at that and he's right over the front hook. There's, there's two fish right there. They came up and turned and went down. When the boat got right over top of them, that's two that came up. Right down, right there. We'll around them out here. I'm gonna turn and throw back across that. See all those fish right there? Those are all bass out there in that 12 to 13. Wow. That one just about took my rod out of my hand. Oh, look at that one. He got a big old black spotty spot on his head. He came up and just swiped it. That's why he, look at this fatty. This is a fatty, fatty, fatty. Oh, I'm just gonna grab him like this because he's not coming off of there. Look at that thick dude. Golly, that is, where'd my pliers go? There they are. That one just about took my rod out of my hand. Golly. Chunk, chunky chunk. I can't even see to get my hook out of it. Would you not look at that thick? This is what happens in the wintertime. They get all thick, mottled up, the water gets cold, and you start seeing freckles on them. This is just a freckle. Look at these lips. He got a mustache on him. What a nice bass that was. He knocked it. Slack in my line. Let me get this boat turned before I get on the rocks here. Catch another one. Just a simple adjustment. Those fish weren't on the rocks when we started with the crankbait. Seeing them on the depth finder, moved out, instant, good ones. All right. All right, buddy, thanks for playing the game. On my setup on a jerkbait, I like a very light action rod. You're getting slashing bites a lot of times, and sometimes they're just barely hung, so I don't want them to have to be able to pull off. The light rod, I still have good feel as it's a graphite rod, but the light rod is basically for playing the fish once I get them on. I'm using a, a loose reel 
It's just a lightweight blues reel. It's a, it's a relatively fast gear ratio, but I'm not bringing this bait to me like a crankbait or a spinnerbait. I can control how much line I bring in on the jerk. And then my line is a big player. I'm using Seaguar and Vizx. I really, really like to jerk with eight pound Seaguar and Vizx. That lighter line drives the bait deeper and has more natural action. And by driving the bait deeper, that cuts the distance that that fish has to come to get that bait. And sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. When you look down on your graph and you see fish, is it a small fish? Is it a big fish? How do you tell? Most of the time when you get a good return, a good strong return like this middle one right here or that one right there, that's a pretty good sized fish. And then it also has to degree on the degree of where it is on the cone. The cone going down looks like you're holding a flashlight and spreads out. If it's off to the side of it, you're gonna get a return like these down here, these little, these little sides. That's a fish that's off to one side of the cone. That's a fish that's directly under the boat. You can see how hot that is. So it's, it, you kind of, it's not an absolute science, but you can get a pretty good idea how big these fish are when you see them, and especially if you get a good hot return like that, and that fish is right under the boat. I'm throwing summer sexy shad now. I'm in the winter and I'm throwing summer sexy. How about that? But what I like about this bait so well on a day like today in the water clarity we've got is it's a white bottom. And that white throws a much better flash than any chromes or any other color that you could throw in overcast condition. We've got the perfect day for a jerk bait. This overcast like this for this white bait. But if, if we were on a high bluebird day, I would be throwing a different color. I'd be throwing a chrome, something that throws more flash. Chrome and blue, IU color, um, gold, pro gold would be another one that I would be throwing. Something that's got some flash so it pulls them to it. But in this overcast conditions, white's the way to go. There's a good one. Ah, boy, I mean, he's got it. Just got it crossways. This one's actually, he didn't even like that in his face. This one's really fighting. He drilled it. Look at that, look at that. Oh, look at that big fish. But he hit head first, head first, head first. Goodness gracious. That is a nice fatty, cold water special. That's where this old big rod just kind of whips him around. He pulls a little bit. And you just reach down there and get him in here. Come here, big guy. That one got it just like you wanted to get it. Going, I gotcha. Now, you don't think that fish didn't want that bait? Look at that. That's how you want to bite a jerk bait. When they're biting it head first like that, you'll catch every darn one of them. That is a fatty. Fatty, fatty, fatty. Oh. You can't look at there. Got him right out of there. You can't tell me. That's not my favorite bite, just about all bass fishing. Cold water bass. Jerk bait. Summer sexy shad in the winter. Uh-huh. Next. Next, please. That big fat belly on there. Merry Christmas. That's Santa Claus right there. You know, it's it, it's not been fast and furious. It's typical winter. It's cold. We're having to work for each bite. But I started out early this morning off the bank. I saw a lot of fish out here on the depth finder and at 10 to 12, over 20, I backed out a couple two real fast. It went through a real lull. And I just slid back up further to the bank where the fish have pulled tighter to the bank and gotten some real aggressive bites. So you've got to be thinking at all times how that fish bites it means something and where he's located. I'm trying to keep the bait in the strike zone as much as possible. So I've pulled up next to the dam where the rocks come down and I'm starting to see those 12 to 14 foot fish again, those fish are the ones that I'm catching now. The ones that are out here, they're just out here hanging out. They're hard to make bite, but the ones that are tighter to the bank are ready to eat. Knock the fire out of it. Golly, did that one hit it. 
and he's not that big. He must have hit it with a full head of steam. Oh, he's, this one looks like Mike Tyson. I mean, he's got, right here he comes. This is the ugliest bass you've ever seen. He looks like a calico. He's so ugly. But boy, he got it. He came up there and he popped it. Look at that. Look at that fish. He's barely hung. He looks like a Holstein, doesn't he? He's got a hook and he's good. There we go. There we go. Look at that one. How about that? He must, he, I mean, he knocked a foot of slack in my line. Would you look at that thing? Top of his head. That is odd as odd can be. Ugly brown. There are some spots on him. All right, Hoss, get out of here. Go on down and get you another minute. I've played with a lot of jerk baits in my time, and a good question I get is a suspending jerk bait or a floating jerk bait? and I've had success with floaters that I've made suspend, and I've had success with baits that come right out of the shelf, right on the tackle store shelf that are suspenders, and I've done well with those. What I really want a jerk bait to do is slowly rise. I don't really like one to fall, that suspends and then it sinks. I don't have as much control over the bait. I don't, um, and the bait won't hang in that strike zone for a long time. The unique thing about a floating bait is it generally will have louder rattles than a suspending bait because you've got you've to create some weight in the suspending bait and it won't be as loud. So that's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. That's almost like um, you know a color change that you might make uh, as it turns the fish on, they're biting this one color well. Or sometimes that little difference, that little hint of a difference in a floating bait that you've made suspend will outproduce the other one. And then on other opportunities, it's the straight one straight off the shelf will do just fine. So it's, a, it's all a, you know trial and error a lot of times to get them to bite. They're really wanting it on the paws. Both of those fish hit it on the dead paws. Because what you're doing is when that bait moves, it pulls that fish to the bait. And then it pauses. And then they're like a cat. They can't stand it, they're so curious they move a little closer, then you move it again, and the fish moves a little closer. And it's just standing there, it's just sitting there in a head down position, which is the position in which most of your shad are when they're struggling. And they're like, that's an easy meal. But we're pulling those fish to the bait. This is the only technique in fishing I know that I can make that fish come to me. Because think about it, we're skipping a bait under a boat dock, or we're burning a spinner bait, or we're throwing a top water, or, or, we're, or we're pitching in a bush. We're going after these fish. We're taking our baits to these fish. Well, this is a technique, they come to the bait. And when that happens, and you can figure out the cadence and the length of the pause, you're in charge. You're very subject to catch some big ones by doing that. Oh, did he knock it. He knocked slack in the line like crazy. I had just twitched it once, and it just doop. Oh, hard pulling. Yeah, he got it. He's got it good. I mean, he's wearing it. See where he hit it by the head? Come on, biggin. Stay on there, stay on there. He can't even get out of the water. He's so cold. There we go. There we go. Whew. I mean, just slow twitching, and that line jumped about six inches. On a cold day, that will wake you up, I promise it will. On a cold day, that'll wake you up. A winter fish, look how white looking he is. He just pulled up here, looking for something to eat. That was a nice bite. Get back in there, fat boy. Still thinks he's hooked. Uh huh. Summer sexy shad. That's the color today on cold winter's day. Catch us next time on Mark Menendez Bass TV. We'll show you how to catch some pickles.